Have you ever wanted to turn invisible? Maybe like Harry Potter using the invisible cloak. Or like a ghost in a paranormal fiction movie. Or using some kind of invisible ink. Then you are at the right place. In the next few minutes, we are going to learn if we can really turn invisible. Before getting into the video, let us clear up some basic concepts. First, in order for us to see something, the object either needs to emit light directly like the sun or the bulb or else light has to bounce off an object into our eye. Second, an object is termed to be invisible when it is not perceivable by the eye. For this to be possible, either light rays should not enter the eye or even if they enter we should not be able to sense it. In this video, we are going to explore 5 different possibilities to become invisible. First way, move the objects at great speeds. There are few theories that say that an object can turn invisible when it travels at a speed greater than that of light because the light cannot catch up with it. But Einstein's special theory of relativity says that we need infinite amount of energy to get an object to the speed of light. So this may not be practically possible. Rule this out. So in the same lines, let us think. What if we can make an object move at a very fast velocity but less than that of light so that we can't see it? Okay, let me clarify this by using an example of a bullet. You can see a stationary bullet but you cannot see the bullet fired off the gun because it is traveling at a great speed. Now that we understand that a bullet can become invisible, the real question is can a human become invisible? Let us consider the following scenario. Your friend is standing in the corridor and you want to run very fast so that you become invisible to your friend. Let us assume that the width of the corridor is 3.5 meter. The article in reference one says that tests with air force pilots have shown that they could identify the plane on a flashed picture that was flashed only for 1 by 2 20th of a second. So you'll have to move across the corridor faster than that. Let us take 1 by 300th of a second. And if you do the calculations, you will end up with a speed approximately equal to 10 power 3 meter per second, which is 1 kilometer per second. To get that number into perspective, it is 12 times faster than a Formula 1 car and 3 times faster than the speed of sound in air. This is just a rough estimate and depends on various other parameters such as the object size. Um, so running at such high velocities is not practically possible. Second way, bending of light. Here we try to take light, pass it around an object as if it were in there. Ok, let us take this simple example to demonstrate what I mean. You can make an object invisible by using the following mirror arrangement. The light coming from the background is bent around the setup in such a way that the observer can't see the setup. And even after the setup is in place, the observer sees the background just as he would without the setup. So yeah, we have just made an object invisible. Um, but wait, this setup only works when the observer is far enough so that the rays are almost parallel. If the observer comes closer, the rays wouldn't be parallel anymore, hence the setup would fail. A research team at the University of Rochester built better setups to make objects invisible in the cloaking region. This is the first setup where they use water filled tanks to bend light around the cloaking region where the objects become invisible. In the second setup, they use a series of converging and diverging lenses to create the cloaking region. In another setup, they use mirrors to reflect light around the cloaking region. Let's see a small demonstration of this. So yeah, pretty cool, right? No. The problem is that the person inside the cloaking region cannot see objects outside the setup. So this is not like the Harry Potter's invisible cloak. Third way, the invisible ink. Let us have a look at the short clip.
Jerry disappears when he jumps into a mug of invisible ink. Let us explore if this is possible. A red colored object appears red because it absorbs all colors and reflects only red. Only rays having the wavelengths between 380 and 740 nanometer can be perceived by the human eye. What do infrared colored objects look like? Would they be invisible? So if we paint a human with red ink, he will look red. But what if we paint him with an infrared paint? Would he really be invisible? No. As the infrared ink absorbs all colors except infrared, it turns out that it absorbs all colors in the visible range. So our eye perceives the object as black but not invisible. Invisibility is not about absorbing the light, but you should be able to see what's behind the object. Fourth way, using cameras and displays. Let us watch the hallway scene from Mission Impossible 4. In this clipping, a camera captures the background and projects it onto a screen, creating an invisible region. If you look at the screen from a different direction, you will understand that this is only a projection. So to make it look more real, we have to track the eye of the observer and change the display on the screen accordingly. This is shown in the next clipping. So we have achieved complete invisibility. Um, but wait, what happens if there are two people? Stop. Stop. The system fails. Fifth way, using meta materials. Meta materials are man-made materials that have properties which go far beyond the natural materials. For example, a meta material with negative refractive index can be realized. Scientists were able to realize an invisible cloak for the first time in 2006, but it was only at microwave frequency range. Work on achieving similar results in the visible range is still under progress. If you want to know more about the meta materials and cloaking, check out the TED talk that is linked in the description below. Well, to summarize all of this, we have explored 5 different possibilities to become invisible. First, traveling at great speeds. Second, using an arrangement of mirrors. Third, the invisible ink. Fourth, using a camera and a screen. And finally, the meta materials. I hope you liked the video. I would like to thank Nikhil and all others who helped me make this video. Hit the subscribe button to stay tuned to more videos.